This is the first video in my tutorial on creating a chat app with Angular and Firebase. In this video, we are going to go about designing the chat app UI and then uh, creating a data structure for it. Hey everyone, I'm Zueb Khan and welcome back to my channel. For any moderate to complex web app, it's always a good idea to start off by designing a simple mockup UI. This does not only help us in visualizing the app, but also helps us decide the structure for the data. So we'll do the same for our chat app here. So your prototype can be built on any tool that you want. In fact, when I first created this app, I used a simple whiteboard and a marker to design something out. And you can use any other tool as well, such as Figma. For the purposes of this tutorial, I used Google Slides, which was pretty quick and easy. So let's check that out. So we have two areas in our chat app. The first is the left panel, which is the chat list area. And then we have the messages area on the right. The first thing that we have on our left area is the search users input field. This is an autocomplete drop down where you can select from within the users on the app. Note in the current version, we'll only be allowing one to one chats. Below that would be your list of chats. Now each of the chat list item will have a display name here and a last message of the conversation and then the last message date somewhere here. And of course the photo of the user. On the right hand panel at the top, we are going to show the currently selected chats, user display name and their photo. And this will change with the chat that is selected here. So for example, here we have user one as selected and it shows user one here. Below that is the chat messages area where you'll see the chat bubbles, which go from bottom to top and are scrollable. Each of the bubble has a text message and then a date on the right side. And then of course we have the input text area to send the message with the send button. And I think that's it. That's a reasonable point where we can stop and lock our chat app features for now. Now we can then look at the data structure for it. Now for our data, since we'll be using the Firebase Firestore database, we need to design our structure according to a NoSQL database. So for a SQL database, it's pretty easy. You have tables, that means you have normalized data and you structure your tables separately. And then you can obviously just create joins when you want to query for any set of data. This will be fast and this will be performant. For a NoSQL database, things are a bit different. So joins are pretty difficult and they can be costly and slow. So a good idea in this case is to map our data objects according to what is shown on the UI so that uh, to display the UI, we need to just get uh, information from one document and we don't need to combine multiple sets of data. Now this means that we might have to keep some duplicated sets of data as well. So let's go back and take a second look at our prototype and then proceed with the data structure from there. So the first UI element here is our search users input. Here we'll need to show all our users as a drop down when we enter any name, for example. This data we already have with us in the form of the users collection. We build this up while building our authentication app, remember? So the first set of data will be users and its structure is already defined in our app as a user profile interface. It has a UID, the display name, the photo URL and other data. Now let's move on to the chat list. For the chat list, we need to have a chats collection. What data should the chat have in our case? So from the UI prototype, we can see that it needs the user's name, the photo, the last message of the chat and the last message date. Note that this is not just one user, but both users who are part of the chat. So when one user is logged in, we'll need to show here the other user's name and photo and vice versa when the other is logged in. So we actually need to keep two users in a chat. Now in a SQL database, we could easily just keep user IDs in our chat object. However, if you do it this way here, it will be quite costly since we'll need to fetch each user's document and manually join it up in the Angular app. If you have many chats here, it will get more difficult to fetch our chat list. So we'll keep some data that we need here from the user and store it with the chat document itself. So in our case, we'll store a user's array, which contains user info for both users, which are part of the chat. Also, we'll keep a user IDs array. This will help us in using the array contains query in Firestore when we need to get 
all chats for the current user as in this list great and then obviously we need our last message and the last message date as well and I think uh, with all of this data we should now be able to populate our chat list easily based on which user is logged in now you'll notice that we have copied the user data here but what if the user for example changes their display name and or their photo so this is the problem with keeping data denormalized like this we'll need to update all the chats with the new user data but hopefully changing user profile data would be less frequent and so won't be that costly so overall duplicating user data will provide us more benefits than problems great so that's one of the major data structure issues that we needed to resolve so next we have the header on the right side now this also contains the user info and this we already have in our user profile info then we have our chat area now each chat will have its own set of messages so we'll have a sub collection within the chats collection called messages now a sub collection does not get loaded with the document itself so we'll only load the messages when we need it each message will have a sender id a sent date the text of the message now with the sender id we can figure out where to show the message on the left side here or on the right side based on the currently logged in user. Great. And that's it for now. If you want more information about how to structure data with the Firestore database, uh, check out the linked video at the top, which is the official introductory video on how to st structure your data in Firestore database. So now with all our data structure set up, we can now move on to actually building the app in our next video. I hope you found this video useful in terms of the process to follow while creating a new app like this. In the next video, we are going to start coding all of this up. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching.